That sounds like my breakfast being made upstairs. Oh, hi, I'm Alan Smith. You know, there are lots of different ways to, to go about things. Sometimes we tend to overcomplicate things. They could be a lot simpler. You know, my motto is that we really ought to work smarter, not harder. You know, growing your own food really isn't that difficult. In fact, if you can make a bowl of cereal in the morning, you can grow your own tomatoes. It's really that simple. Come on, let me show you. Just start with a large terracotta pot. If you think about it, it's just a big oversized cereal bowl. Next, what you wanna do is you wanna fill it up with cereal, or in this case, potting soil. And place your tomato where about two thirds of the plant is below the soil line. Now, if you've ever added things like bananas or strawberries or blueberries to your breakfast cereal, you're gonna know exactly what I'm doing here. You see, I'm taking some of these organic fertilizer spikes and I'm placing eight of them around the plant, just like this. Now all you have to do is add a healthy serving of water. Soak it in like this, give it a good drench, then kick back and watch those gorgeous tomatoes grow. Give it a try. What we wanna do is dig a trench. After the break, we'll have more tomato tips from blogger Shauna Coronado. Garden Style will be right back. Planting tomatoes is simple, but if you're worried about the foundation of your plants and making sure it has an adequate root system, my friend Shauna Cornado has got a great tip that will make sure that you've got a solid foundation. Hey, my name's Shauna Coronado, and right now I'm at P. Allen Smith's Garden Home. And today I want to show you a tip, how to plant Ralph. Yeah, this is my friend Ralph. He's a tomato and there's a special way to plant a tomato and what it'll do is make your tomato stronger and tougher all through the season. Okay, so here's the idea. You rip off Ralph's arms. I'm gonna do it. I'm ripping off his arms like that. You don't break the stem. You gotta rip them all off. What we have is one giant long stem. Now, what we want to do is dig a trench straight trench in the soil. Close enough. And we're gonna lay Ralph down. And what we're gonna do is put him right on the side. Now it looks like I'm being harsh to Ralph, but the reality is, is that we're gonna give him new life. I think we're gonna even pull one more arm off. When we lay him all the way down, what happens is, we cover him with soil, and then Ralph the superhero grows new roots all by himself. It's really cool. He grows little tiny root hairs all along this, and pretty soon it will be like a rock. It's a great foundation for your tomatoes to grow around. So we'll cover it all with soil. And then what we'll do is make sure that there's only a little bit of Ralph peeping up. And that's it. That's all there is to it easy way to plant a tomato, and it's gonna make your garden far more successful.
Up next, we'll show you some low maintenance ways to keep your beauties in tip top shape. The thing I enjoy the most about gardening is getting my hands in the soil. Well, almost. I mean, actually, I do love the abundant beauty that these flowers will produce. But you know, it's that in-between stuff that often gets in the way for a lot of us. Watering, for instance. You know, keeping the soil consistently moist in these containers is a key to success, but it can take a long time. That's why I use one of these drip irrigation kits, and it's so easy to assemble, and it takes so much of the work away from enjoying these beautiful containers through the entire season. In fact, with a single kit, I can water up to 10 potted plants like this. For a 10 to 12 inch container, one dripper works fine. For a 14 to 20 inch, well, you may need two drippers. If you've got a 24 inch container or larger, use three drippers. Place the dripper in the pot near the base of the plant where the plant meets the soil using a support stake. So let's talk timing for just a moment. You're probably gonna water your containers about an hour a day. Now let's say it gets really hot, you may have to increase that a little bit. And if you want this to become a completely hands-off project where you don't have to worry about watering anymore, you can take a battery-operated faucet timer and attach it to the faucet and it'll come on automatically. And you don't have to think about watering anymore. So why don't you give it a try? Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. These tubes that run around, they're easily hidden. So when you hook it up, put them toward the back so you don't see them and I always use saucers under my containers. It's just a little extra insurance policy to make sure that the soil stays consistently moist. Now there's more than one way to keep your garden fully hydrated. Why not consider using soaker hoses? Coming up, the chubby vegetarian and I complete our respective challenges. You may recall some time ago, I challenged my friends, the chubby vegetarian, to come up with a recipe based on herbs and vegetables that they would grow in a single container and that recipe needed to be really yummy. They didn't disappoint. After growing sweet basil, some white onions, Italian oregano, gretel eggplants, and Big Bertha bell peppers together in a container, they came up with a Thai-inspired green curry with eggplant and peppers. Doesn't it just look wonderful? Now in return, the chubby vegetarian challenged me to come up with a traditional family recipe uh, but make it vegetarian. So I decided to create a meatloaf. Yep, a meatloaf. A meatless meatloaf, no hamburger meat. Now you may think that's totally impossible, but it's actually very good. Let me show you how. To start, preheat the broiler on your oven to high. Now while that's heating up, cut one large red and one large green bell pepper 
and half lengthwise, discarding the seeds and membranes. Place the pepper halves skin side up on a foil lined baking sheet. Flatten with your hand. Now broil these for 10 to 12 minutes or until they're blackened. Then once they've just about cooled, remove the skin and finally chop. Now go ahead and reduce the oven temperature to 350. In quarters, finely chop two pounds of cremini mushrooms in a food processor. In a large nonstick skillet over medium high heat, add one tablespoon of olive oil to the pan, and then add the mushrooms to the pan and saute for 15 minutes or until the liquid evaporates, stirring occasionally. So the mushroom is the essence of this meatloaf, and all I'm doing is sauteing it. It smells great. Then in the same skillet, add one cup of asparagus cut into half-inch pieces, one coarsely chopped carrot, and an onion in the pan. And saute this for about six minutes until tender, stirring occasionally. Then what you want to do is you want to add this onion and vegetable mixture with the peppers into the mushrooms. Next, we're ready to spice this up by adding one cup of toasted walnuts, one cup of toasted breadcrumbs, two tablespoons of fresh chopped basil, two tablespoons of fresh thyme, two tablespoons of tomato paste, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, about a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper, four ounces of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and two lightly beaten eggs. Now once you have everything thoroughly blended together like this, it's time to put it into a loaf pan. Now the size pan that I like to use is a nine by five, and I've greased it. And once we get all of this mixture in here, we're gonna pop it into the oven, and we're gonna bake this for about 45 minutes at 350 degrees. There we go. Okay, it's coming out nicely, it really looks good. And I wish you could smell it. So I'm just going to kind of pack it around like this. Bring it around on the side. There you go, little meatloaf. Okay, so while your meatless meatloaf is cooking, you want to create a nice little sauce to go on top. Now you can do ketchup if you like, but what I'm going to use here is a little more of that tomato paste we used earlier in the body of the meatloaf two heaping tablespoons, and then I've got a tablespoon of vegetable broth. And then here, I'm just going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I'm just going to mix all this together. You can add a little more mustard if you like, like that flavor. After your meatless meatloaf cooks, brush on the topping and bake for an additional 10 minutes. And then you're finished. You've got a wonderful vegetarian version of a great American classic. Give it a try. Still to come, a quick and simple dinner from the birthplace of pasta, Torno Presto. There's a lot to be said for keeping it simple. Some of the best recipes only have a few ingredients, and this recipe is no exception. We're taking it easy, Italiano style. Barber Bruno, da San Giorgio, provincia di Salerno, Italia. Ho da visitare mio figlio e mia nuora, Arcanzol, perché uh, mia nuora aspetta i bambini e noi siamo troppo felici. Quando sono anche felice mi piace a cucinare. Quando la gente viene all'improvviso a casa mia, io ci dico sedetevi alla tavola e ci preparo un po' di formaggio, un po' di vino e mentre che cucino mezz'ora, venti minuti. Spaghetti sui sui alla napoletana. È perché il pranzo è più spicciativo e più, più, più svelto. 
prima ho messo un po' di olio, un po'. l'aglio l'ho fatto soffriggere un po', e poi ho messo il pomodoro e poi Piccolina, non piccolina, 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 no, abbastanza bene, non grossi, grossi perché a nessuno piace. È perché questo è un cuore mio, così mi dice, farle, so. E si è fatto l'aglio, si è fatto bionde, poi ci ho messo i pomodori con basilica. Cocca, un chilo, un chilo, un chilo e mezzo di pomodoro. E poi ci ho messo le coperte sopra per fare un po' di stima. E dopo ho tolto coperchio e ci ho messo un po' di sale, un po' di pepe, e dentro la salsa, poco poco formaggio, che per dare un sapore meglio. Quando incomincia a accendere la stufa, metto la ai, e dopo abbasso la poco, metto a miria, e dopo alzo un'altra volta, perché se deve finire a asciugare la salsa. Poi quando si sta cucinando, si sta facendo piccolini piccolini, i pezzi che ho tagliato per dentro. Poi ho messo la pendola dell'acqua, che a me mi piace al dente. Anzi, a tutti quanti piacciono al dente quelli che vengono a casa mia. Muscio so bene perché li genera tempi di denti. <ride> Due di acqua dove va pasta. Ho la pasta e le ci ho messo dentro fra i penne. Così va la salsa, la ho girata. Poi ci ho messo un po' di olio. Ho messo i spaghetti dentro al piatto. Poi ho tagliato un po' di, di basilica sopra e un po' di formaggio. Quando il piatto si è fatto preparato bene, quello che si ne mangia si ne gode. Buona salute e buon appetito! Cosa? Cosa? Lei ce la voglia di fare? Come so? Sono ottime! If you want to be the first to know about our latest projects and what's happening at Moss Mountain Farm, be sure to sign up for my newsletter at pallensmith.com and check out our online store. We'll be right back. Well, we've got the kitchen all tidied up. The meatloaf is finished, and oh, it smells so good. I just wish you could, you could smell it and taste it. It is really great. I hope you'll give this a try. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Mm -hmm. Oops, you can't make an omelet without breaking all of the eggs, at least once. Come so? Sono ottime. Posso mettere un'altra volta? Sì. Dove vai a mangiare? Sul tavolo. Yay!